Hi, welcome to my webinar on understanding GitHub use cases, GitOps use cases. Um, I will work at Siddiq Angu and I'm a developer of Mandalism Program Manager at GitLab. GitOps is the newest of the cool things happening in the cloud native ecosystem. And everyone is talking about it. We now even have the GitOps working group and also the a conference centered around GitOps itself. Now, but one thing we do very much as a community from the beginning is, is get caught up in the buzzwords and all the discussions around how cool the technology is without really spending much time into all the different use cases that are possible and some of the caveats, especially for some regulated industries. I'll be talking about a few of those in this webinar. First, in a bit about myself, I'm a developer evangelism program manager at GitLab. Yeah, that's a long time too, but basically I do program management for the DevRel team at GitLab, uh, the developer evangelism team at GitLab. Now, I'm based in the Hague, Netherlands, and um, my interests are in Kubernetes, GitOps, DevSecOps, and uh, CICD. You can always find me on Twitter at Serki247. But first, what is GitOps, basically? Now, according to the uh, GitOps working group, it's simply a set of principles around how if uh, the whole systems we use for our infrastructure is managed. Now, and these principles that have been stated by the GitOps working group are the creative desired state, the version and immutable state, continuous reconciliation by pulling automatically, and also operations through reconciliation. But the key things I want us to take from all these principles is definitely you need to declare how your infrastructure should look like. If we are, we are already aware of infrastructure as code where you can use tools like Terraform or any other tool or Kubernetes if you're using Helm to describe, okay, this is how I want my Kubernetes cluster to be. This is the number of nodes. This is the number of uh, pods. This is how applications should be scaled and so on. Now, the same thing with if with uh, almost any type of infrastructure as code strategy that you have. Everything needs to be declared. Everything needs to be documented in such a way that everyone looking at it understands what needs to be achieved, what kind of resources need to be deployed. But versioning it using tools that we are all familiar with, like Git, ensures that you maintain a self-documenting history of how your infrastructure has been changing or how your cluster has been changing and make sure that the deployed state is always exactly as what you have in your Git repository so that things don't just drift and there will now be some conflict in the future. Now, and you are able to achieve this by ensuring that there is some form of mechanism that automatically checks between the, the, the desired state which is stored in your repository and the actual state that is running in production so that if there's any drift or there's any issues or there's any conflict between these two states, it automatically pulls from the desired state that has been stored in Git or that has been uploaded to a registry and reconciles both of them. So this way you are able to securely ensure that your infrastructure, your systems, your application are always up to date, running the latest code and everything works as they should. Now, what's the difference between yeah, DevOps and GitOps? What exactly is their difference? DevOps is a culture. It's how you do things and how you ensure that your application moves from development to production and back. Because once it gets to uh, production, you need to be track it, you need to do your tracing and go back and recommendations go back to the development team to maintain the circle. Now, but for GitOps, GitOps mainly focused on ensuring that 
your infrastructure is deployed and is maintained as you require. And the way your application moves to your production environment is also maintained efficiently. That is the goal of GitOps. That's you've written how your application should be and how your, uh, sorry, how your infrastructure should look like and how your application should be deployed to that infrastructure. Then all the process of testing, of version control, uh, building images and so on, down to deploying them, mostly to Kubernetes, to, to a Kubernetes cluster, is what GitOps is about. Now, also, someone would ask, what's basically the difference between GitOps and infrastructure as code? Because it feels like it's just some new way of doing infrastructure as code. Hmm, you might say that, but the difference here is, let's put it this way. GitOps is like when infrastructure as code meets merge request or uh, pull request, that is, people can collaboratively make changes to your application. Probably uh, your developers discovered, oh, they need more resources in, for to run certain applications, or they need to request for more server resources. They create a pull request or a merge request. And CICD runs all your necessary policy checks and all your testing against the submissions they've made before the application gets deployed. Now, this the difference here is between GitOps and infrastructure as code. Of course, you can use version control for your existing infrastructure as code, but GitOps takes it further in the sense that infrastructure as code requires you to have declared your the way your infrastructure will look like, then push it to your Kubernetes cluster or your infrastructure for it to be deployed and for a new changes to be deployed. Now, but for GitOps, the infrastructure as code that you've uh, code that you've created, once it has been accepted by your policies and pushed to probably a production branch or some branch system that you have or your uh, workflow you have, or probably to some image repository somewhere, you have your uh, on on your Kubernetes cluster infrastructure. You have an agent that will constantly be pulling and be checking that production branch that you've specified for where your desired state would be to constantly see if there are new changes. It pulls them, or it will be checking an image repository where the image of your application has been stored. And anytime there's a new change, it pulls it and applies them to your infrastructure. And it also ensures regularly, automatically to check, which is where uh, operations via continuous reconciliation comes in, to check the desired state against the actual state. Are there changes? Have things improved? Or are there new updates? Or is there an issue that has happened on the cluster that's making that has now made the two environments to be different? Then it will automatically reconcile, pull the most recent or the most updated uh, code from your repository or your uh, production branch and apply them. While for infrastructure as code, new change has to be introduced before it is pushed to production. Now, one way. GitOps does this is by using what we call a pool strategy. Now, for normal infrastructure as code, a push strategy happens where once you've written, make changes to your infrastructure as code manifest, you need to push it to either your Kubernetes cluster or your infrastructure for it to be deployed. Now, but in the pool strategy, the agent, there's an agent in your Kubernetes cluster that will constantly look out for new changes and pull those changes to your cluster, to be applied to your cluster. 
Now, one advantage of this is your secrets and you have some other critical uh, things that are necessary for your cluster to run are stored on the cluster. You don't need to find a way to store your secret or to store some credentials on your repository for things to work. But for uh, infrastructure as code, you will need to have configured your repository or your project to have the necessary credentials to deploy to your cluster. While for pool strategy, the agent is already living within the same cluster as where your applications will be deployed. So it only needs to communicate with the repository to confirm if there are new changes and pulls them. Now let's see a pictorial representation of what a pool deployment will look like. This image was taken from uh, the githubs.tech uh, website. Now we'll see here, we see here that you have your code or your application in your application uh, repository. When changes are done, it triggers a pipeline and that pipeline runs all the necessary jobs or all the necessary things that you've already, uh, jobs that you need to confirm if everything is okay or to build images. Then it pushes the images to uh, your image repository, maybe the registry or GitLab's image registry, and also maintains updates to your environment repository. While in your environment, which most often is your Kubernetes cluster, the agent you have in this case, which in the e case of this image, you're calling an operator, will constantly check your image registry or your environment repository to confirm, are there any changes? Are there any updates? If there are, it then pulls those changes and applies them. Now, it also observes your deployment, like it, as you can see in the image, to see what are the new, has there been any change or any drift or any issues happening on your deployment. If there are, it reconciles them and makes sure that the actual state is the same as the desired state. So basically, GitOps allows for collaboration because your development team use tools that they are already familiar with, Git, to write codes. Almost everyone can see what, is, what has been written. People can apply for more resources or can make changes to resources. The uh, top level management can be able to review changes that are happening and they can be able to approve or make recommendations to the requested changes. And the SREs or infrastructure engineers who have access to actually let this team get deployed can also see all the things that are being done and approve before it goes forward. Now, this also allows everyone to be knowledgeable about what the infrastructure looks like, how things have been deployed, and be able to contribute new knowledge to the rest of the team. Now, one key advantage, another key advantage of uh, using GitOps as defined by the GitOps working group is your secrets are now secure because you don't need to maintain your secrets in different places. Like, okay, you need to set up, uh, for example, if you're using GitLab, you need to set up some secrets or you need to integrate GitLab with your Kubernetes cluster, or you need to do a lot of things to make sure your project or your repository can communicate, your GitLab project can communicate with the cluster to make any deployments necessary. But in the case of GitOps, if you are using a gear, a Kubernetes agent, you only need to put your secrets in the repository, uh, sorry, in your Kubernetes cluster. So all the, the only communication, the only credentials that needs to be configured with GitLab is the is whatever credential is necessary for the Kubernetes agent or operator to pull, to pull or communicate with your project to see for changes that have happened and deploy them. Now, lastly, because 
there is need because you already have a mechanism that pulls for changes. It's easier for developments to move fast and deployments to happen at almost any time because constantly you don't necessarily need to go and trigger uh, a deployment to production. There's an agent that co constantly pulls and sees what new changes are there to be deployed. Now, after we've seen, now that we've seen what GitOps is and why uh, use GitOps, the next thing is, what exactly can you use GitOps for? Which is the main, uh, the main part of this presentation, the use cases. The first and the most obvious one is definitely infrastructure automation. Now, you have your Kubernetes cluster. How do you maintain it? How do you manage it? Kubernetes uh, it has been created in such a way that you can easily create a declarative state of what your Kubernetes cluster should look like, what your deployment on Kubernetes should look like. You can create your Kubernetes manifest file to define the okay, the number of pods you want to deploy, the, how you want your applications to communicate, the services, your, um, your storage classes, your persistent volumes, ETC. You can define them in a manifest and you can even use things like Helm to define, uh, to use a more descriptive language to define how your application should look like or use Helm charts to define, okay, this is a values.yaml file using Helm chart to now say, okay, these are the things I need for my Helm chart and they're automatically deployed. Now, also this makes it easier since we already have these tools to ensure to deploy an application to our Kubernetes cluster, to now use GitOps with fashion control easily. And once we do that, our cluster stays up to date. Even if you are not using Kubernetes, if you have some form of other infrastructure, because definitely not everyone uses Kubernetes, you can use, use the same principles of GitOps to make sure you have a declarative state of your whole infrastructure. You have a mechanism in which your application is pulled securely. Your, the, manifest are pulled into your environment and deployed in your environment. And also you ensure that there's a reconciliation between the, the, there's reconciliation between what is running your infrastructure and what you've defined. Now you can, now the next thing is drift management. This is a major issue when it comes to maintaining your infrastructure. Yeah, you have your Kubernetes cluster. Uh, in certain situations, there have been people that decided to deploy some changes to your cluster, decide while you have a version, a, a Git repository hosting probably your manifest. It can be a huge mess when sometimes you need to deploy things and there are some conflicts in how applications or the cluster has been deployed. Applications have been deployed to the cluster. With GitOps, you can ensure that there are no drifts. Any, and any time there are drift, it should automatically be reconciled. Because you've already defined how your cluster should look like and how your application should be deployed to your cluster, the Kubernetes agent you have or operator you have in your cluster will ensure that the two, the desired state and the actual state are the same. This way you avoid drift management completely. Now, policy enforcement. One of the concerns a lot of people will, will come up with, especially in regulated environments is, okay, if we are making changes to our repo and people are collaboratively working on the repo, how do you ensure things don't escalate? unnecessarily or things do get applied and create problems or uh, probably take down the infrastructure. Now, 
you need to, since GitOps itself is a set of policies, it now depends on what tools you use to ensure that for every change that I made, the necessary checks are done, the necessary security scanning are done, the necessary, everything necessary is done. And there are levels of approvals. Okay, you might have code owners set within your project where anytime certain changes are made to certain parts of the Git repository that is maintaining your infrastructure application, certain people must approve or certain people will be notified to review and approve. And mostly because when you use a magic request, you create a magic request or pull request, you create a magic request. As soon as you submit your magic request, there are certain people that will be notified to approve, maybe quality assurance, they are probably audits, probably are trying to spin up more instances that might cost the company a lot of money. They need to be able to review and ensure that, okay, we are not going beyond or we are not using dependencies that might hurt the company. And as soon as that is done, at the last stage, it might be the SREs who do the final, okay, let's match this. And as soon as it's matched to your uh, production branch or infra branch, or it's compiled as, uh, an, as an image and hosted in the repository, that's all, everything is done. It's now left for the Kubernetes agent to pull those new changes and apply. And enforcing this policy, uh, this policy means that anything that gets to that final stage of either hitting, getting merged into the production branch or being built as an image and kept in the image repository has been certified to be okay and ready for production. Now, security scanning is, nothing is 100% secure. And part of your ensuring that you attain a very secure tooling for all of your infrastructure is ensuring that all the necessary security tools or security checks that need to be done. For example, maybe uh, secret detection so that none of your application is actually leaking any secret. Ensure uh, static application testing, you did dyna dust, the dynamic uh, security testing, license compliance. Sometimes we add license, people might mistakenly add licenses that uh, add dependencies that have licenses that your organization don't support. Or in, in certain scenarios, you are you, uh, there are certain dependencies that probably due to security reasons or due to some other regulatory requirements, you are not supposed to use them. And your developers missed it or they used a dependency that for one reason or the other includes some of those security challenges, uh, some of things that have those security challenges that you are trying to fight against. So all the security checks ensures that nothing gets passed to your production branch without you detecting. And this, and having a security dashboard ensures this happen because it gives your quality assurance or security team an interface where they can monitor how, how many security challenges or security vulnerabilities are happening without having to necessarily even touch the code. They will have been able to see, okay, this is, these are the things that happen or if they need to improve the uh, scanning or add more scanning tools or more things, but majorly to ensure that whatever gets to your production branch has been fully tested and reliable. Now, the next thing is governance and compliance. Now, this is especially for environment like in FinTech or banking industry where there's a lot of regulation. And we all know that, yeah, in the startup world or in other tech, but it's easy to, it's easy to jump on the latest and the new things. Oh, uh, Kubernetes, yeah, we are, we are in. Uh, serverless, yeah, we are in. Um, GitOps, yeah, we are in. But in regulated environments like banking, where there's a lot of regulation, there needs to be cautious 
approach to adopting anything. So that is where ensuring that yes, adequate governance that is happening within an organization. Okay, now if we are using GitOps, do we have audit trail? Where are audits maintained? Where do we track changes that have been introduced? And since we are using Git as the main version of control for, uh, for GitOps, it's easy to have a history, a version history of how an infrastructure has changed, who introduced what, when was it introduced, and so on. And when in your continuous integration pipeline, you also have tools that are ensuring there are no issues in your supply chain. You, you are using the right dependencies that you're supposed to use. You are using, you are following some certain compliance to ensure you are using the right licenses, you are using the right, every necessary checks and every requirement that are needed are done, down to you having, uh, uh, you having your changes pushed to production. This is important because in regulated environment, every trace of activity happening is extremely important and is needed. Now, within your cluster, ensuring that there is no way in which there, a compromise can happen or secrets can be leaked is extremely important. That is where GitOps shines, uh, GitOps shines because most times your secrets live in the Kubernetes cluster. So you have little or no need at all to add your secret or to expose your secret within your project. So governance and compliance is a huge way in which you can use GitOps to ensure that your applications are securely deployed and your infrastructure is securely maintained and operated. Now, the next thing is, yeah, not everyone is using Kubernetes and not everyone is using uh, the latest shiny things around the cloud native ecosystem, but you can still use the principles of GitOps. Now, because basically what is GitOps? It's basically you having a declarative state of your infrastructure. It's you ensuring that uh, your, your, your manifest or de your declarative state is pulled continuously to your cluster and also ensuring that the, the two states of your cluster, the, design, uh, the, uh, the desired and actual state are continuously maintained and operated. So now this can apply to anything outside of Kubernetes, as long as you can use things like uh, Terraform to define how your application will look like. Also have something like Ansible to define how your configuration would be. Then you can have some form of uh, um, maybe CI mechanism to ensure that continuously, maybe after some interval, some CI jobs or some script runs, to pull, to check your uh, production branch or your uh, whichever branch you're using and compare it to your infrastructure to check if there's any drift. Has there been changes in the deployed state? Has there been new objects that have been introduced? Then it applies them. Now, the main thing is about the principles using and living by the principles are not necessarily the specific tooling. Though GitOps has been built around Kubernetes itself, but we use quite a lot of things in our, uh, in our infrastructure, in our, in our environment. And following these principles is what is most important. Now, this is the end of my talk. And I hope we've learned quite a number of things around the use cases of GitOps. If you want to learn more about GitOps and other things around it, these are a few links, especially GitOps.tech. That's where, if you are new completely to GitOps, you can learn more information about it. You can also check uh, 
the open uh, GitOps working group GitHub page. That is where you can see more documents around the principles of GitOps and some of the awesome work that they've done around GitOps. GitLab also has a number of resources that you can use to learn more about the different use cases of GitOps. Thank you very much for joining me and see you online.